How's everybody doing? Coming at you from Myrtle Beach International Airport. And what we're going to do in this video is talk about the airline industry and blockchain and how we can make it more efficient as far as uh, uh, tickets, checking in, baggage, luggage, uh, all those things. And see how uh, it can affect, uh, affect everything and make it a better experience for everyone as far as getting on a flight and going places. Should be pretty interesting. How's everybody doing today? Uh, we'll talk to you a little bit about uh, the airline industry and blockchain and what's going on. Uh, like a lot of industries, like the medical uh, sector, endless, and you can Google this, and there are endless articles on blockchain and aviation. They're everywhere. And, uh, you know, if you think about when you fly, for example, you go to the airport, you get your ticket, you have to buy you know, get your ticket, you know, out of the machine, your credit card or what have you. You know, some people, not everybody has a credit card, you know, to get their ticket out. Then you have to take your luggage, you have to scan that, um, show your ticket to get on the plane. That can be streamlined. Blockchain on a ledger, you know, have that ticket so you can just, uh, you know, barcode when you go in and just scan it and walk right in and everything's legit verifies your uh, uh, who you are have it tied in some way to your driver's license identification purposes you can really verify someone you know it's not really an invasion of privacy privacy is more of an uh, I look at it more as a safety issue you know if uh, you have a little background on somebody when they're getting an airplane ticket it could make the process uh, more fluid very fluid actually and can make everything and uh, one of the some of the, the uh, models are looking at for airline industry and blockchain they're looking at where the biggest opportunities lie and this article right here it states that challenges such as high fixed costs regulated industry um, blockchain basics can be used uh, there's a little bit of information about that benefits for the airline industry systems is archaic and siloed, which hinders the fact and seamless exchange of data. That's true. Blockchain can address these problems. It also can uh, automate uh, the repetitive uh, process as well, the ability to create smart contracts, electronic agreements, uh, customer experience, your points you get, the miles that uh, uh, you've uh, accumulated. Um, automate the, pri uh, the uh, process among the airlines, uh, minimize uh, the risk of error when getting a ticket, getting on a plane. Um, some of the other countries, Singapore, usually the Asian countries now, they're actually uh, going ahead and uh, actually get some information on uh, blockchain and using that within the airline uh, sector. And I'm wondering, I know in Charleston, they, do, they make Boeing airplanes. So I'm wondering, you know, I haven't heard anything out of uh, Boeing about uh, using blockchain, but I'm sure they're looking at it like, every, like everyone else, like other airlines are looking at. But I uh, give some airlines uh, right here, KM, KM, uh, KLM, Air Canada, um, smaller airlines, actually. But it's going to be more of to the, I think, the airlines than the manufacturer. I mean, manufacturing process can be used, like we've talked about before, with any company to uh, logistics, supply chain, and so forth. But this is going to be up to each uh, uh, airline. And I think it's going to catch on. You're going to see this. And even uh, the airports, they can incorporate it to help with uh, baggage handlers, catering, airport ground crews, all that stuff. Detail tr uh, the flight checklist. If it's on a decentralized ledger, it's there. It can't be altered. It can't be tampered with. Uh, going back and like trying to like change everything on a ledger, trying to hack into it or destroy the information that we have on there, it's kind of like taking the chicken McNugget and turning it back into a chicken. It would be almost impossible to do. So the information is there; it can't be altered. You cannot have people changing stuff. That's the good thing about the thing I love about blockchain. That information is there. And this is a great article right here. It's from uh, bcg.com. And it looks at the airport industry right here. This is one from uh, Airport Technology. 
a lot of really reputable sources talking about blockchain in the in the area industry as well. And talked about stakeholders. We have stakeholders. We have ground handlers. Um, everything. The whole process, you know, really can be uh, applied to blockchain. That's, that's incredible. That's great. Now I fly a lot. I, mean, I fly uh, from uh, Raleigh Durham Airport to Las Vegas a lot. I've flown on Myrtle Beach, Atlanta, New York airports. My I've flown almost Dallas, uh, Chicago, um, several airports, Philadelphia. I've flown out of almost every major airport in the United States. And I would love to see you know, a more streamlined process to make it more efficient. Because there's times, you know, somebody's done something wrong. I've had to wait, almost miss flights. Uh, the information wasn't there. It would be so much more transparent. I credit debit, my debit card wouldn't work, wouldn't give me my ticket out, you know. Like I said, everybody has a debit card to actually put in the kiosk to get your ticket out. So uh, there's more efficient ways to uh, do that. And, uh, and that's the biggest hassle is, you know, going through the process to get on the airplane. I don't have a problem getting to the airport. Just getting on the plane, everything you have to go through. But... Uh, It talks about, you know, lost records, supply chain, the adoption, IT solutions. Blockchain significant aviation, which is significant blockchain, is true. Incredible articles here, actually. And, and like I said, it's, the, the, the web is just full of uh, information about uh, blockchain and this has come within this past year past six months actually airlines are looking into that um familiar with robotic process um so the airline industry i mean it's uh, it's evolving like everything else and you want uh, reliability and safety too i mean I, will, I would love to actually get on a plane and uh have it on a ledger where i could look at the maintenance of the plane you know when was maintenance work done to this plane you know, when was it inspected? Um, landing gear, how, when was that greased, you know? When was uh, parts of the plane old? How was the, the tires, where did they come from? How often would they change? What's the tread on them? You know, all this could be on the blockchain. Uh, information about the pilot. You don't know who the pilot is. I mean, I would love to have information about my pilot. I have a cousin who's a pilot for Delta. I know he's a really, really great pilot, but some of the pilots, I would love to have information on that where you could just go on, go online and just pull it right up and it gives information, you know. You could streamline this whole process. Make a lot of people happy. Probably would make the stockholders go up in some of these uh, airline companies that just have a tendency to be down a lot. So, uh, you know, might be a plus on them. And industry solutions, we're looking at... Uh, Different industries are getting involved now. Aviation industries with blockchain. So, the aviation industry is actually getting involved in recommending the airlines go this route. I think you're going to see a lot of uh, uh, good stuff come out. It's going to be good. And we'll talk while we're here. We'll talk a little bit about XRP. Some stuff came out on XRP recently. Da, da, da. Let's see what we got. Uh, three uh, freelancers paid in real time. This is great right here. I mean, this is showing the XRP can <laughs> settle stuff in three seconds, which is, uh, I think it's one of the greatest inventions we've had in the past 10 years. I mean, the smartphone's great. It was invented back in 2005, but, you know, I want to say Bitcoin, Bitcoin is a, a great invention because it was the first, uh, it was the first one to the party, first mover, mover actually. But, uh, you're actually going to see real utility coins. I think XRP was probably the one, one of the first real utility uh, tokens. And it, the use cases here are very, very uh, uh, prevalent, actually. That is a dog barking in the background. It's my neighbor's dog. I'm here in North Carolina, actually. And we have a lot of bear and deer here. And uh, I have a border collie. And she barks. She's a great watchdog. She, she barks at everything. So she's barking at an animal right now. And I want to step outside to see what I see. All right. She sees something I don't see. Okay. All right. Anyway, we, we, we'll go on to <laughs> technology here. Um, technical indicator. We see this a lot. There's no, no one has any uh, 
validity or knowledge of what really is going to happen. You know, this is like uh, CNBC every day, you know, talking about what's going to happen. They don't, they don't really know. Everybody can speculate for the most part, but you just don't know for the most part. But this is interesting right here. All right. And we'll go and look, actually. Hopefully, they can use XRP with the airline industry. I, I can see XRP, actually, uh, uh, with payments. Maybe, um, say, for example, you're booking your flight, you know, and uh, the money's right there, you know. Or, let's say, food and beverage, you know, as far as, get, as, far as getting payments, that can be done as well. So, uh, you know, that's going to be interesting. But I'll tell you what, we're going to, since I, oh yeah, I want to show you guys um, about uh, the Bitcoin ATM since I, I was telling you about a flight. I'm going to try to get to Vegas soon. I go twice, three times a year. And I do real estate out there uh, with uh, different agents as well. I uh, see the Siegel Company, Bugsy Siegel, the mobster in Vegas, his family, they have a real estate company out there in Vegas. They're good people, actually, and some, um, Vegas is a growing area. A lot of people, it's kind of like Orlando, Florida, uh, of the of the West. You know, people from other states, California, uh, Seattle, I mean, Washington State, places that are expensive, it seems like. They kind of migrate to Vegas. It's kind of like Orlando. Um, people migrate there from the northeastern states, on the on east coast states. They're more expensive, but... Uh, you want to have been to Vegas, know it's, it's a great area. And they have ATMs. They have crypto ATMs. Now, what they have, they have Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash, Ether, Dash, Litecoin. Las Vegas itself, there's 15. Now, they're already in, in many casinos in the area. You, you see them like, I think there's one in Planet Hollywood. Las Vegas Strip, they have a few. Uh, one I've been to, actually, it's over on Flamingo uh, Street. Flamingo and... Um, Close to Flamingo and uh, Cobalt Street, actually, uh, by Bally's and the Flamingo Hotel. It's a gas station, a shell gas station, and they have one right there. And uh, by operations, you can buy and sell, ATM, teller. Um, not bad. Here we go. Here's They have one downtown on Fremont, too, as well. So there's a lot more. I, I was in Vegas not too long ago, earlier this year. And they didn't have as many. Now we're seeing them pop up. Now, I saw, now they were in Orlando, too. I was just in Orlando, and they had them as well. And you're talking about airports, uh, currency exchange uh, in the airport. I think uh, uh, there's a lot of international travel travelers that will love to use a digital asset to uh, maybe uh, convert to fiat money, like an XRP or something, you know, to actually, uh, instead of having to pay the high transfer fees, you know, go in their account, transfer it over, go to like a machine like this, say, I have XRP, I have VeChain, I would like to exchange it for US dollars. And it's like an ATM, they can do that. I don't know the capabilities of all of these right here. I know some of them do have that, and over other countries that do have those capabilities. The ones I saw, the one I saw in Vegas actually was just, uh, you could get, you could uh, get crypto out of or put crypto in. But as you can see right here in Vegas, there are a, they're a lot, 24 hours a day. So, you know, if you gamble a lot, I guess you can use crypto. You can use some crypto. Some casinos do take crypto in Vegas because they want to enter the international market. You know, a lot of uh, crypto is a lot bigger in other countries than it is in the United States. Those countries are ahead of us as far as regulations and stuff go. And we'll talk a little bit about real estate. Actually, we go out west. I'll show you guys... Uh, what we got in Vegas, actually, uh, we're going down to da -da, Las Vegas right here. All right. Oh, in Las Vegas, little Katy Perry video right here. <laughs> but anyway, with Vegas, actually, it shows the Vegas uh, Strip right here. Uh, different roads. Flamingo Road goes uh, parallel. Tropicana, that goes parallel. Not parallel, goes up. Uh, uh, Behind the strip, actually, on the side. And parallel, Cobalt Street, actually, is a parallel. Ellis Allen, one of the best small casinos I've ever been in. A steak dinner there is awesome for like nine ninety nine or eight ninety nine. <laughs> you can't beat it. So I love those small casinos like that. Red Rock area, uh, North Las Vegas. And 
We'll get to the MLS and see what they have here in Las Vegas, Nevada. Yeah, Las Vegas is getting a big influence, influx of people from California. It's like Florida, no state taxes here. And uh, property is a lot cheaper. They have more land to pick from. And you can see right here, we got, you know, 195. It's similar to Florida. I mean, I mean, you're not going to make as much money probably in Vegas if you live in California. But there again, cost of living, the traffic jams are not there in Vegas. Like, if you, I've been to L.A. six times probably, five or six times. Every time I go to L.A., it's just traffic, traffic. I want to get out so bad. I mean, it's... You know, 80 miles before you even get to town, you're in a traffic jam, and you sit there in 12 lanes of traffic all day. I mean, it's, you know, if you want to go to Venice Beach or Santa Monica, you know, you better leave at four, 3 o'clock in the morning to get there. <laughs> I mean, it's how bad traffic is in L.A. Yeah, you can see right here, these these properties are not bad in Vegas. I mean, $189,000, $114,000. And the thing about Vegas is... Uh, if you work in the hospitality industry, actually, they have a union out there and they provide, like, me like with what I hear, free medical care. And I know there's a place uh, by the Stratosphere, Las Vegas Boulevard, where it forks off and goes downtown. They have me medical service services for people and employees in the hospitality sector. And a lot of them do really well to make a lot more than a national average. And these houses right here actually are the same price or some a little bit less than the national average as well. So, uh, and, yeah, this house is made sturdy. I mean, I mean, you have your Spanish tile on top to keep it cool. You know, you get 120 degrees in the summertime. It's not a hum like it is here in the south, a wet, humidity, humid environment. But um, 120 degrees is still hot. It's like a bacon hot kind of. But uh, think about it, like the wintertime. You're not going to have many heat bills, actually. And that Spanish tile, actually, a friend of mine had a house, and uh, even in the wintertime, it seemed to... Uh, Insulated pretty well, where it's pretty warm, so you really didn't need to uh, use heat, even though you may get down in the desert to 40 degrees at night sometimes. But there again, it's just a dry cool for the most part. But Vegas, that, yeah, it's a lot of homes there. And what I'll do, hang on one second. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm in North Carolina right now, actually. Uh, helping my family out. I, I just saw <laughs> a black bear. I didn't know I just saw him. That's what the dog's working at. A black bear running across the backyard. Yeah, I'm not going to mess with a bear. Maybe he'll go away. I could fire a warning shot, but I'm not, I'm not going to do that. It's, it's late at night. I'll go with the neighbors up, even though I'm out, out in the country. So, uh, okay. He, he's gone. Uh -huh. Okay. Anyway, I don't think they have bears in Vegas. Maybe they may have coyotes in Vegas. <laughs> that might be the first uh, uh, digital asset guy that uh, YouTuber to actually uh, saw a bear in in his video. <laughs> but uh, what what we'll do actually, we'll go to a map right here. Show you guys around. Show you guys around Vegas, around the area. Those of you who have never been before, Vegas is in the desert. It's in the middle of nowhere. I mean, it's only like big city around. The thing about living out west is you got Vegas right here. You know, you're good. Three hundred miles from L.A. Phoenix is three hundred miles that way. Salt Lake City up here. Uh, Nevada is pretty remote. There's really nothing until you get to Reno, way up here. So you're kind of out. But Vegas does have about two million people. Or so, and it's growing very, very rapidly, though. But uh, there's a lot of cool towns around there. You got Pahrump, Mesquite, Nevada, uh, Boulder City, close to the Hoover Dam. That's actually a great area as well. And uh, right, I'll actually show you. Let's uh, see what we got. That is Texas. That's the wrong one. <laughs> but anyway, here we go. All right. Yeah, we'll go down to southern Nevada right here and show you some of those towns I was just telling you about. Southern Nevada right here. Remember this right? This uh, 
you probably remember this, Young Guns, Bon Jovi. <laughs> it's kind of in this area. But, uh, Haram, Nevada, Boulder City, Nevada, Laughlin. It's actually a good town. I like Laughlin. On the Colorado River right here. Arizona, California, Nevada, kind of meet. Mesquite, Nevada. Shows a little bit of information about these towns all around. Great area. Beautiful scenery out there, too, as well. If you get a chance, you really have to go there. Downtown Vegas, I have that, too, as well. On my website, it goes into downtown, actually. It shows uh, uh, Fremont Street, Arts District, Financial District in Vegas, Las Vegas Boulevard. It goes downtown, Palm Stars, some TV that's down here as well. I'm very familiar with Vegas. I know all these streets. A lot of time in Vegas. I like Vegas. It's a good town. Good dinners there, too. I mean, you get steak and lobster if you know where to go, like downtown for 11 bucks. I mean, here in the Carolinas, it would cost you 30 bucks. Anywhere else. <laughs> I'm not kidding. He's nowhere to go. I mean, you know, I even, I even go over to the Grand Canyon area, actually, to, uh, there's really nothing that. It's actually kind of remote. It's Hoover Dam. Kingman, Arizona, Route 93, Grand Canyon. Let me stop the video right here. All right. All right, folks. There we go. That's a little tour of Las Vegas area real estate. We can you can back in the surrounding area. Um, we talk a little bit about um, the airline industry as well. And somebody fly on the airline, you think how blockchain can actually help the airline industry as well. You know, help you be more efficient and effective. I would love to see, even with a. I mean, I fly Frontier, the cheaper cheaper airlines, but I would love to see it. About a lot of Frontier, I've never had a problem with them. Love them. They're really affordable. I mean, I. I'd love to see blockchain on that as well. Uh, any questions on blockchain, email me at breakingthechainusa at gmail.com. Any information on real estate in the Las Vegas, Southern Nevada area, please email me at americanrealestateref at gmail.com. Be sure to look at the link below and actually get a link for... Look at the link actually to get a Ledger Nano S through your digital assets and also a Coinbase account. All right. And we will talk with you later. And everybody have a great day. Thank you so much.